Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Really good to have you along today. So today I'm doing a quick, uh, I guess you could call it a review video. I've been trying out the uh, Kendo Star Tenko Fubu, if I'm pronouncing that right, Tenka Fubu, uh, Jordan Specialist Shinai. Um, so just please forgive me in my footage. I'm not long practicing Jordan. Uh, I have a lot to learn. Uh, but obviously I try my best uh, and I know I've got a lot to learn so <laughs> please uh, go easy in the comments, okay? <laughs> the main thing is, um, as I said, I want to check out uh, the Shinai uh, and basically evaluate, you know, um, what, what benefit does it give you? Is it worth spending the money on? And will you notice a difference? Uh, you know, will, will it actually help uh, in your pursuit of studying Jordan or, or making your performances from Jordan in the likes of Shi'ai, uh, will it facilitate that and improve that or offer something that you would find of benefit? Uh, so here's the Shi'ai in question and it's got some really interesting features on it. So uh, Andy did a video on his website uh, where he first introduced it and did talk about some of the features and uh, so the, the first one we'll start with is the Tsuka. Uh, so when you compare the, the length of the Tsuka to a uh, regular Shinai, like say a regular Dobari Shinai or anything like that, uh, anything for standard practice, you'll find that there's it's probably about an inch longer. Okay. Um, that in itself, it's not a massive difference. There's a subtle difference um, when you stood in Kamai. Uh, which Andy talks about in the video. Uh, so when you're in your Jordan Kamai, if you imagine uh, from this perspective, you know, you're stood in your Kamai, uh, if your hand was just that bit further down, uh, what I find anyway is what it tends to do is you tend to flay your elbows just a little bit more and it just kind of puts a bit of tension into the creak of your hand. When you have the slightly longer grip on it, uh, the scar is longer, your elbows can just come naturally forward a little and just kind of relax a little more here. Uh, so it's just a little bit less tension in your frame, but you know, it's not a massive difference. It also moves your corte, the right hand corte, just slightly wider of center. So I think you just have a little bit more clear viewing space as well. So it's just a little bit more comfortable, um, but I wouldn't say it's a game changer. If you use a standard sheer knife for Jordan, um, then, you know, that feature in and of itself, you know, could you still do Jordan just fine with your standard Shinai? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but will you feel more comfortable with this? Potentially. I think some of it would depend on things like the size of your frame. I'm not a particularly big guy and many Jordan players in the West would tend to be quite tall. Um, but I, I would say I feel a difference, and I would say it's a positive difference, but I also think it's quite a subtle difference. Um, so let's move on. There's a second uh, main kind of feature, and that's really in the, the, the door section, the bit that flares out. Um, that is a bit thinner for a start, and the position of it is a little bit different. So hang on one sec and I'll grab a regular Shinai or another Shinai, Dobari Shinai, and we'll just compare where those two sections live. Okay, so here I've got the other Shinai. This is the Dobari Shinai and this is the Jordan Shinai. So if we put these two together end to end, okay, so end to end, you can see that the door section on the Jordan Shinai is further forward. Okay, so they've moved it forward that way. Okay, but it's confusing because when you look at the scar, you think it's closer this way, but it's actually further forward that way. And what that does is it makes it a little bit more um, weighted towards the Kenten. And that really helps kind of promote the forward kind of nature of the cut. The trajectory of the cut in Jordan is a little bit different. But it's also because you're using katate waza, one-handed strikes. Uh, so having the weight assist the shinai. If the shinai wants to go forward more, 
uh, it's a little easier to, to get that momentum and get the, the kind of snap into the cup. And that is basically the main uh, area where I feel like uh, the Shinai is a genuine benefit. Uh, now they retail for a set of three uh, for £137.50, I believe, and that's including shipping. Okay, so uh, when you break that down into a, you know an individual charge for each shinai, um, what, you're probably looking somewhere in the the sort of mid 40s, you know, 45, 47 pounds, something like that per shinai, including shipping, which is pretty much equivalent to you know, what you'd pay for a decent Shinai most places once you figure in the shipping. Uh, I live in Northern Ireland, so you can get charged any extra for shipping. There's a lot of companies that would do, um, you know, charge me extra, especially considering the climate with Brexit and all that sort of thing. Uh, so in terms of value for money, it's pretty good. It's uh, certainly not the cheapest Shinai out there, but it's also not uh, overly expensive uh, for what it is. Okay, in terms of the overall build quality, um, pretty happy. Uh, I've used this for a good few sessions now, so I've had it for a good few weeks, and put it through a couple of uh, you know heavy cake or before um, kind of committing my opinion um, and. First couple of things I would like to probably touch on because these, uh, this is the first video of two. Um, there's another uh, Ken of Star Shinai that I've checked out as well. Um, I'll put a link uh, just in the top right here to it, um, which is the um, Koho, I think that's pronounced right, Koho, uh, Japanese Madake Shinai, uh, Dobori Shinai. Um, so, yeah, I'll link that above. Uh, go and check it out. But. The first thing I would remark on is the leather fittings. Okay, so I've had some experiences in the past um, with other suppliers where the leather, particularly that's used in the Nakayui, um, is very kind of thin and uh, it's hard to describe, but it, it's kind of thin and it almost, it, it looks fine when it turns up, but a couple of months into its life, it really kind of starts to shrivel. It's almost as if it loses a lot of moisture and becomes very shriveled. And so when you've retied it a couple of times, I find it doesn't kind of bind the take as nicely as it used to. It's a minor gripe. You can live with it, they don't break or anything. But the Kendo style one doesn't look like it's gonna do that. It's really nice and thick and a generous amount of leather that's been used. Um, now it's still early days, so we'll see how it goes uh, in terms of aging and bedding in. If 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 it goes the same way as the others, then yeah, maybe I'll make a post and then let you know how that goes. But I don't think so. I can generally tell when they turn up which type of leather it is, and this just seems like the better of the two, the sort of more premium selection that they would use for the Nakayui. So I'm really happy with that. Um, yeah. Uh, in terms of the scar, uh, it's you know it's kind of got the the doubled up sections here as you'd expect. You wouldn't really expect that um, not to be there on a more kind of. This isn't really a premium and shinai so much, but it's not a uh, entry level shinai of of any sort. Um, so you'd expect that. Um, yeah, the scars stayed nice and straight and true as well in terms of where the seam is. This just seems like it's not. You know, obviously it needs to have some flexibility in it, but it's not flexing overly. Um, that's something I've had uh, as a bit of a problem on other Shinai. Um, and I've thought a lot about whether it's me or the Shinai. And quite honestly, um, I think now maybe I have a bit more of, of confirmation actually that um, it might be more the Shinai that I was using rather than me. But we'll see um, how the other one goes because I don't think the problem's coming when I use Jordan. It's probably more chewed on when I'm doing was a um, anyway let's move on uh, in terms of the the actual timber itself the bamboo um, the take are really nicely shaped really uniform the the knots you know the, the these parts here they're all lining up really nicely um, so it's obviously cut from a single piece of bamboo and the craftsmen have done a pretty good job of getting this all matched up and 
When it comes to durability, I think that's really important. It's probably one of the most important factors for me personally in terms of durability for a Shinai is uh, how well are the pieces matched and cut and shaped so that um, under loading and Im impact, the forces are spread evenly across the body of the Shinai. I think that uh, in combination with the source material, the bamboo, determines whether or not you're going to have a Shinai that's problematic for maintenance and has good longevity. And I think that this will have both. I can't see any reason why it wouldn't. If I had to find anything that I might raise as, um, you know, a point of uh, criticism or some, an area where they could possibly improve, um, there would be two, two main areas, I would say. So one is the candle style uh, sticker, the, the, the actual labeling on it. Um, what I've noticed on, not so much on this one, but on the other Shinai that I got, the um, Japanese Marake one, uh, but it's starting to happen a little bit on this, is that the, the candle style label is just peeling a little bit. Um, and it seems to sort of have like a top laminated layer and then the main sticker underneath it. That top layer is um, coming off and then you know, it's pretty easy to chip away on this. Now, if it gets sort of chipped away, I don't think that's really a problem because that means it's got kind of a hefty wax somewhere. But the top layer just peeling, that, that was a bit of a concern because on one hand, you could say, well, I don't really want stickers on my Shinai, that's fine. But I also know that, you know, if you're using a particular Shinai maker's product, um, it's quite nice to carry their mark on it. Okay. Now there are, uh, th there is the, the, the actual maker's mark over there in terms of the, like, you know, the actual manufacturer. Um, but I'd rather have it either stay on that sticker from Kendo Star or be able to, to, to take it completely off. So they might want to just improve that sticker a bit because I don't mind having the stickers on. Um, and if it's a good product and I enjoy it, then hey, you know, I'm happy to promote it. Um, so that's a really minor gripe though, because it doesn't have any impact on longevity of the Shinai or performance of it. Um, it's more f just feedback, I suppose, is, yeah, these, at least in Northern Ireland, in our climate, these are coming off a little easier than I might have expected. Um, in terms of the wood itself, so my main gripe, if I have one, and again, this is quite minor. I don't think it's going to impact anything on ter in terms of longevity or performance. But if you can just see here, I'll hold it, hold it up nice and close. There's just this kind of blemish here in the surface of the take. Okay. And that was there from brand new. Okay. So it came out of the box like that. Um, and as I said, I don't think that's really going to have any major impact on its performance or its longevity. You know, it is still well finished there. It's not, it's not rough. Um, it's just almost as if there's been a piece that's sort of come off the top layer there. And then the, the workmen have worked it a bit to, to polish that up a bit, but it's still, it's a bit of a blemish. You know, if, to be honest, if I was making Shinai, uh, particularly if I was a, a premium maker, I'd maybe, you know, I'd consider rejecting that, but then I don't know the costs involved in, producing Shinai, maybe that's not really a practical thing to do. But as I said, it's a really minor gripe. It is strictly cosmetic. It's not going to have any difference, you know, any effect on performance um, or longevity. So it's not really a problem. So there we go. There's the Tenka Fubu uh, Jordan Specialist Shinai. I do recommend them if you're taking Jordan uh, because like I said, it really, it's a Shinai that really wants to throw itself forward um, in terms of the weight balance. Um, it's fundamentally well made and I do think that it's a reasonable price in shipping terms so it's good value for money and um, another interesting note as well and I'll leave it here is that this weight balance it's really important I wouldn't under undervalue it um, because the way it kind of pulls the shinai forward uh, when you throw a katate waza it wants to straighten it up as well so it's an interesting uh, thing. I wasn't quite expecting this, but it, it helps with hasuji. Um, and this is something that can sometimes go wrong with Jordan. And you kind of throw your cut, and because you're coming from this angle to that angle, it can become a little kind of 
glancy, right? Um, some people struggle with that transition. If you've got a Dobori Shinai, um, you don't get the feedback from the Kensen, from you know, from the Manuchi, from the, the, the cutting end of the Shinai. You don't really get that. Um, so it's quite easy to kind of throw a glancing strike and maybe not be so aware that you're actually doing it, aside from if you're paying visual attention and you're really watching for that moment of impact. Whereas this Shinai really wants to straighten itself right at the end of the cut. So as you fling it forward, it pulls into a straight line. Um, and I think that's really good. And that's where I think the value lies in the Shinai. So it's fundamentally well made, um, like you would expect any good reputable Shinai to be. But the extra value uh, really comes from the weight balance. And then having the longer scar, that's just like a, uh, icing on the top of the cake. Okay, so there we go. That's the Tank of Fubu um, Jordan Specialist Shinai. Head over to Kendo Star. I'll pop the links in the description and just pop over to their website and have a peruse over it. I'll be leaving my review on the website very soon uh, just to leave them positive feedback. Uh, thanks again, Andy Fisher. I really appreciate uh, the gear and the assistance in putting the order in. I actually placed a custom order for this. So I got two of the Jordan Shinai and one of the Japanese Madake Dowari Shinai. Um, so yeah, you can mix and match if it's not practical to just buy Jordan Shinai. Uh, just know that that option is available to you. You just need to uh, get in touch and email Andy and he'll get you looked after. Um, so yeah, head over there and check it out. Till next time, take care.